We're going to show you the axial skeleton vertebral column comprised of these regions cervical region, seven vertebrae, thoracic region, 12 vertebrae, lumbar region, five vertebrae, sacrum comprised of five fused segments and at the bottom of the tailbone we call it the coccyx bone three to five fused segments as we can see the cervical features features of the cervical vertebra include atypical vertebra C1 and C2. I will show you them. I will grab one and bring it into view. Just under the skull resides these two bones. Atlas, like Atlas, holds the world on his shoulders. I'm going to bring this one up here. And we can see the atlas resides here with the world on top. C1, first cervical vertebra, looks like a big ring. This is atlas vertebra. C2 has this little finger-like projection up front. I'll turn it around for you so you can see it from the anterior view. Atlas goes on top the axis. C2 is the axis because it has a tooth-like process, odontoid process of the axis vertebra. This allows you to shake your head when you say no. This is where the rotational movement, a pivoting action, occurs. On the posterior aspect, and notice the atlas does not have a vertebral body. All vertebra, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, have vertebral bodies except atlas. Cervical vertebra are unique in that they have a bifurcated spinous process. We call this bifid spinous process. All vertebra except atlas have spinous process. To the side, all of our vertebra have transverse processes, even the atlas out to the side. I'll turn the skeleton a little bit and you can see the vertebral artery in red going up through a hole through the transverse process of the cervical vertebra. This is a unique feature and here's another one, C4. This hole is unique going through all cervical vertebra. It is known as transverse foramen. The cervical region is the only place to have it. This is where the vertebral artery, vertebral vein goes through that opening. There's another unique feature. You see all the yellow coming out in between each vertebra all the way down the vertebral column. 
there are bones that come together, and I will show you. And when they come together, they create an opening between them. This opening between the vertebra, where you can see the nerves coming out, we call this opening intervertebral foramen. Inter because it is two connecting two different ones together. This skeleton model has in between each vertebral body a structure known as intervertebral disc. In the axial skeleton, skull, vertebral column, sacrum coccyx, we also have the thoracic cage. Notice the sternum included in the axial skeleton is in the midline, anterior. The sternum bone is comprised of three segments, manubrium, body, and this little point right here called xiphoid process. The ribs articulate in the posterior, I will turn this skeleton around, you can see the thoracic spine, T1 through T12. Each vertebra in the thoracic has an accompanied left and right rib. Each vertebra in the thoracic has a pair of ribs, T1 through T12. So we have paired right and left ribs 1 through 12. We have true ribs 1 through 7 and they're considered true ribs because they articulate through their cartilage. This is the costal cartilage. Still considered part of the ribs but it articulates to the sternum, true ribs. False ribs, as we can see, articulate up through cartilage to cartilage. Now we have rib pairs from T, uh, T8, 9, and 10 are part of our attached false ribs and we have two floating ribs. And I say two meaning two pairs, left and a right set. This is the review of the axial skeleton division. Here's a few features of the thoracic vertebra. Notice I have two of them together. This is about T4, T5. I'm going to turn them slightly sideways. You can see the long sloping kind of pointed like spinous processes. Also we have large, very large transverse processes on either side. Now, I do not have the intervertebral disc in between, but we can see that if you look at it just right, it looks kind of like a giraffe's head, an individual one. That's thoracic vertebra. Lumbar vertebra down below are a lot larger. They have a very large vertebral body. These happen to be L4, L5, which sit right on top of the sacrum, bearing the weight of the body. And there's, of course, the coccyx. 
they have a very kind of a short, blunted, large spinous process and a very sharp blade-like transverse process right here. The thoracic vertebra, a unique feature. I want to show you how the ribs articulate with the thoracic vertebra. Now, what's unique about ribs and how they articulate they have on the posterior aspect of the ribs this is known as the rib head the head of the rib just and I use the pointer here so you can see the just next to it we have the neck of the rib and you see this little bump, this raised area, that is called the rib tubercle. Now that rib tubercle and the head articulates like so in this fashion right here. The ribs act as a kind of a bucket handle when we have inspiration and expiration when we breathe. So the rib tubercle facet articulates on a spot right about here on the kind of the inferior and anterior aspect of the transverse process. It's kind of hard to hold it steady right there. The rib head, there's a rib head facet I'm going to try to space these so they're like they're a uh, happens to be a, a disc right here. The rib head actually articulates between two vertebrae, and the rib tubercle articulates with the transverse process of these two vertebrae, the one that's above. And that's the rib that it's named after. Where the rib head facet, and I'm going to take the, I need my pointer, where the rib head articulates here and here on these two vertebrae, this is known as rib head facets. Individually, I'm going to take one apart. Individually, they're known as a demi facet right here. And right here, this would be known as the rib tubercular facet. I'm going to show you the sternum here again. Manubrium, the body, and xiphoid process. This is the costal cartilage and I'm going to grab a couple ribs and show you the difference between right and left ribs. If we pick up any typical rib, a lot of times you're wondering well, how and which way do we figure out is it a right or a left rib. The first thing you look for is the rib tubercles. These are very easily identifiable. I call them the rib bumpies. Little bumpies. Tubercles. Next to this is the head. The head of the rib. These are always posterior. So that places them in the posterior aspect well, we can now distinguish is it posterior to the anterior, but it, which way and what side do these ribs go? There is a natural slope to the superior to the inferior as it goes medial to lateral, kind of like shingles on a house. Another way is on the inside, the con 
concave side of the rib. The inferior aspect there is what's known as a costal groove. This is always inferior. That means down. So then you can always place rib head posterior costal groove down and this places the rib this one in my hand and the right is a right rib this one happens to be a left rib I'm going to show you how the sternum and a rib articulates together. Because these ribs, the flat area you see, is actually where they articulate with the cartilage. The vertebra and the posterior aspect articulates like this. and I can't really do it, I'll just move the whole sternum, but I'm trying to show bucket handle type movement.